Welcome back. And now we're gonna address a few things about uh, women's sugar bear basketball. And so to start off, the Sugar Bear basketball team is currently 8-1 and in conference and on a seven-game winning streak. The last three games, however, have been very closely contested. Who would you give the credit to more, you know, the players or the coaches? I mean, I'd like to start off saying close wins are wins. You know, it's seen, it's, you know, even great teams have close, close games. But, uh, you know, I think it, it all goes through Megan Herbert. She's the she's she is the centerpiece of this team. Without her, this team would not be in this position. So I think you need to go through her. She gets the rebounds. She gets the points. You know, she shoots. She shoots the highest on the team. She has the highest percentage on the team, and she makes her free throws. So I think that's where all, most, if not all, the credit needs to go to her. Well, you know, um, some of it to Megan, um, some to the coaches, but mostly, you know, it's a competition of SLC. You know, the women's SLC is stepping up. You know, McNeese State Cowgirls, they're seven and two in conference. You know, right behind um, UCA. And so, and but Northwestern State, you know, they're one and eight in conference, but you know, they played UCA to a tough game, you know. So the commodity of the girls basketball in the SLC is beginning to become a little tougher mm -hmm. and you know, the competition. And yeah. so I, I, I blame it on the competition, the good play of the SLC. I and mean, also the, the coaches are, they're, they're winning those games that you know, they're, they're, some of those games, the, they might be looking past them, but the coaches are trying to keep them on point because they, they know they're good. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, uh, everybody knows they're yeah, good, and including they, the players. And they, they, they're playing winning basketball. And uh, yeah, so the coaching, but it's mainly Megan Herbert. She is, <laughs> she's the key to that team. I Look. mean, it, you can't give a win to one specific player. Um, but I think that the coaching staff really puts them in the position to win those games and keep them close, but the players executing yeah. is really yeah, they, what determines they're the all They're result. all executing. They're all executing as one unit this year. You know, they've had two, three years under their belt together. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we foresaw this happening, yeah. you know, yeah. last year. There was one game from making it to the NCAA Finals. Mm -hmm. You know, McNeese State put them out. And this year they'll probably surpass, surpass McNeese State and get into mm -hmm. the NCAA tournament. So, I mean, we saw this coming. It's just, it's all coming together now. Yeah. You know, the coaching staff has been together for a couple of years now. Uh, Matt Daniels, uh, Megan, she's, her points are down, but you know, they're, they're, everyone is getting their share. Mm -hmm. I mean, speaking of her points being down, you know, with seven games left in the season, she's averaging 16.7 points a game and 10.7 rebounds, mm -hmm. which are both below her career averages of 19 points and 12 rebounds. Yeah. What would you, I guess, credit this decline, you know, to? What would you say is the reason for this? Uh, she understands she needs a team to win. So, you know, it, she's passing the ball out and she's looking, the, the other teammates are also stepping up their game. They understand. You know, she may be the leader of this team, but she can't win if we don't play well. Exactly. Um, they're spreading the ball around, you know, so of course her points is going to be down. Everyone knows their role now. As to last year, you know, feed the ball to Megan. Let's mm -hmm. see what she does. Everyone is feeling out, you know, what they're supposed to do, and they're feeling, they're feeling comfortable in their role. They're having fun, you know. Mm -hmm. Her points are down, but um, Nakia Guyton, her points, you know, they're down, you know, she's 9.1, but, you know, she will have a, a spurt 23-point game, a 20-point game, a 15-point game, you know, and they're just all playing together as a team this year. Yeah, I mean, it, it really has shown to be true that their chemistry from the past few years is coming to benefit them now, but I think a large part of her numbers being down is also the competition seeing her for the third year yeah. now, you know? They're they've seen her, her they know what she does, she's been dominant from the beginning. Yeah. So they're starting to they're focusing, collapse on her. They're focusing yeah, in you know, her, on and, her more. On the paint, and, and, and the, then that's why she kicks and, it And out. the advantage of that is, you know, then you've got open shooters. Yes, and and Micah Rice, and, you know, there's quite a few of them. The list goes on. And and they can be even better if, if Weston Taylor, if she can get it going coming off the bench, she's coming off an ACL injury. Yeah. And if, you know, it almost happened almost a year ago, you know, right now. So she's right on course. She's actually on pain, of course, in her rehabilitation. So if she can get comfortable and she can get to knocking down shots, they can be even more dangerous. It's all about her stroke, you know. As of right now, she's shooting 30% from three, but she's shooting 32% overall, you know. She's a three-point specialist. Uh, she's taken 13 shots that were twos and 65 threes. Yeah. 
bringing in Michael Rice and the other guards that they have is, is really helping the team. And I think if Weston Taylor can get it going for the tournament, you know, this team, uh, even the twins from McNeese State, I don't, I don't think that they can stop. <laughs> well, I mean, this is, this is, this is a strategy that's been shown to work, and you know, in men's basketball, and you know, everywhere, it's have a big person in the, have a have a big presence in the middle where they're gonna have to collapse on, mm -hmm. and then have surround them with three point shooters. All right. Well, uh, aside from Megan Herbert, nobody else on this team scores double digits. How do you think they're continuing to be successful with such spread out production? And say if if somebody's off or if Megan's even off, you know, how is the team able to continue their success? Well, first off, um, they play good defense. You know, they play good defense, and defense causing turnovers and creating turnovers will cause offensive, you know, fast break points. So they're doing a nice job at that. And the other thing is just. I mean, they've been together. This, this, this is their second or some third year starting. You know, they all played together last year. You know, it's just, it's just the camaraderie that they have. I mean, yeah, the, if your shot's not falling, your defense can still be at top notch. That can be consistent. And, you know, they're keeping the score down, so you don't really need three players with double-digit scoring. Thing. But we, they do have four players with more than set, or four other players scoring more than seven points. So there is production there. It's just not there's not spikes in it, they're spreading the ball around. And yeah. plus their other bigs are rebounding. You know, amongst Megan, Courtney, and Chantel, you know, their, their, their rebounds are pretty high. Yeah, I mean, Courtney Duver's really been the one that seems to have taken the pressure off of Megan when she is getting collapsed on. You know, she's the second leading scorer on this team. She's the second leading rebounder. She's averaging nine and a half points, six rebounds a game. Correct. And uh, it, it's really fun to watch them pass it around in the post and then slip it outside to one of the five guards <laughs> that can shoot the three from I mean, the outside. And that's that's the kind of team, you know, UCA has shown they can beat the big they can beat yeah. the big boys. So that the, the team that can play good defense, keep your points down and then they'll get they'll get their their averages. They just they're just keeping you down and disrupting your flow offensively. Yeah, and also, you know, they're undefeated at home. <laughs> we got to throw that in there, man. They're undefeated at home. They're tough at home, man. And it's and it's tough to come in the first and beat the Sugar Bears. Well, I would agree. You know, I, I'm going to have to. I, I can't. I can't go with either one of you guys on on this topic. We. It seems like we all agree on most of these topics, which is very rare for us, especially you. But you know, uh, it. It seems that it'll be interesting to watch how the season progresses. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, towards, towards so the tournament time. I'm going to go ahead and uh, name JD the winner because on the non toss ups, he's he won a few of the questions. <laughs> If you'd like a little bit of FaceTime, you're right. welcome. Well, uh, Super Bowl was the uh, the most watched TV show in America. It set a record last night, and it showed one thing. Eli Man is coming out from his brother's shadow. I may be a Cowboys fan, but I can recognize that Eli, with his goofy face, he doesn't look like a quarterback, but he's a winner. So that, that's I would just I would just like to say, you know, people are going to start seeing him as a Hall of Famer, and then if he can go on like this, he'll be better than his brother. All right, well, uh, profound words from yeah. J.D. Williams here. Tony Romo. <laughs> Both the men's and women's basketball teams will be in action this week, with the men playing at Texas State on Wednesday and at McNeese State in Conway on Saturday. The Sugar Bear basketball team will be playing the Lady Bobcats on Wednesday in the Ferris Center, and then will travel to Lake Charles, Louisiana on Saturday to face the Cowgirls in an East Division showdown. And from myself, A.J. Harper, Marcus Esther and J.D. Williams, we'd like to thank you for watching Channel 6 Scoreboard.